Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 51 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. Now in this uh, video, let's uh, learn something fun and of course very useful for especially microscopy image processing, which is image thresholding and segmentation. I'm pretty sure most of you know what it is. So let's go ahead and uh, at least quickly cover what it is uh, before jumping into before jumping into uh, coding a few lines in Python, because this way we all have a common understanding of what it is. Okay, so uh, again, we tend to use image segmentation and thresholding like, uh, you know, interchangeably, but there is a small difference between them. Now, image segmentation is a process of dividing or partitioning your image into multiple segments. If you can clearly see five different things going on, uh, you have a nucleus, you have cytoplasm, you have something else, you know, you, have, you separate these pixels. Okay, if you have a, uh, if you're a material scientist, you have a, or a geologist backscattered image, and you have like one region that is mineral one, mineral two, mineral three, porosity, clays, and uh, 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 let's say uh, quartz. Okay, or you have your titanium alpha phase and beta phase, and so, uh, these are all uh, uh, image segmentation, right? You're segmenting it. And for segmentation, you can do image processing, which is what we are trying to do, or you can use other techniques, like for example, when you collect a fluorescent image and you apply DAPI, uh, you know, stain to your uh, to your tissue, and then you're actually looking at your nuclei, you know, in blue color, that is pre-segmenting the image. That is the best way of segmenting. So you don't have to do any tricks with image processing. Now, in material sciences, when you actually do EDS analysis on an electron microscope, that is segmenting your image because uh, the signal that you get from, uh, for example, you know, uh, well, I almost said alpha and beta titanium, but that's a bad example. I'll explain that in a second. But the signal that you get from, uh, you know, uh, uh, silicon dioxide, SiO2 or quartz, is different from the silicon uh, uh, from the uh, signal that you get from zirconium oxide, right? So, uh, and for that, EDS can be useful. And for alpha and beta titanium, EDS cannot be uh, uh, fully helpful because the chemistry is the same. So we look at something else. The crystal structure is different. So you use EBSD to segment them. So eventually image processing is all about image segmentation. So you can understand what's going on in an image. When, even when you look at an image, you know, you're like, this is cat and this is dog. You, in your mind, you're segmenting all the pixels that contains da a cat and docs and so on. So this is image segmentation. Image thresholding is a simple form of image segmentation, that's it. It's a subset of image segmentation. It's a way to create a binary image based on the histogram, okay, based on a threshold value. So if you actually look at an image something like this, again, based on the chemistry itself, you can say you have region one, two, three, and possibly four, and maybe five also. That's visually, you, you can tell that, but uh, you know, uh, by using coding or computer software, we are actually looking at the histogram and saying, okay, these are all the black pixels, these are all the white pixels, these are all the gray pixels. Obviously your image has more gray, so you see like a lighter gray pixels, you know, these ones seem to be a lot more than the darker gray, and then the bright ones are very few. And then you set a threshold to separate each one of these. And here is an example uh, where I've done that. Here is your input original image. Again, in, a, in your original image, pixel values go from zero to 255 if your image is eight bit, right? It's two to the power of eight. Uh, that many uh, gray levels are pixel values. Now, if you take this image, look at the histogram and say, okay, this is my threshold. Show me all the pixels above the threshold. And here is all the pixels above the threshold. Okay, so this is showing you your original image with the thresholded pixels. And then you say, okay, this is fine. Now let me apply the threshold. And as soon as you apply this threshold, that image becomes binary, meaning all other pixels are turned off except for the ones that went through this threshold. So this is your segmentation or thresholding uh, or binary segmentation, let's say, okay? Now, when you do this type of uh, analysis, when you do this type of thresholding, typically the background pixels are assigned value zero and the regions of interest will have a value of one. Again, Original image, the values are continuous, zero to 255. Here, this is called binary image for a reason. It's either zero, a pixel value can be either zero or one. Sometimes the pixel value is zero or 255, okay? So uh, now, if you keep doing this exercise, well, all of these 
different regions, then you would end up with a fully segmented image in this case with four regions, okay? Each of these regions uh, represented in different color, uh, but in reality, each image, uh, you know, each pixel value in these regions will have different pixel value. That can be 0, 1, 2. For example, this can be my uh, 0, the green can be 1, yellow can be 2, and red can be 3. Or it can be, uh, if it is a red, green, blue image, then this is nothing but 0, 0, 255, and the red is 255, 0, 0, and the green is 0, 255, 0, and yellow is, you know, uh, a mixture of these two, right? So that's how the pixel values are. But this is what segmentation is, and this is uh, what uh, thresholding is. So just wanted to provide a quick background before we jump into the code and start, uh, you know, uh, at least uh, start uh, segmenting or thresholding your uh, images. Now, in this example, I'm going to use, let's actually do plt.imshow of your image so you can see what the original image is. I'm using OpenCV library to load the image, but it can be anything, okay? And I'm going to use matplotlib pyplot to visualize, to show the images. And the input image is labeled osteosarcoma01. And by putting a value of one right here, I'm saying, okay, read the image as color image, uh, meaning all three channels. Uh, so when I import this, and if you look at the plot here, this is actually, uh, I'm using OpenCV, which reads colors as BGR and not RGB. Okay, this is again, I covered this where, uh, in, as part of our OpenCV. That's why these nuclei that are supposed to be in blue, they have this weird yellowish shade and then this green is green because BGR or RGB green is okay. And all the areas that are supposed to be in red are showing up in blue, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, let's, uh, in fact, I have done a lot of these uh, images. Uh, let me go ahead and remove all images from the Explorer and go ahead and start from scratch. So hopefully that makes sense, right? Instead of BGR, uh, I mean RGB, we are using BGR. That's why the image looks like this. If you want, you can go ahead and use scikit image if you want it in RGB or you can convert this into BGR. But as long as we know that these images are B, G, and R, now let's actually do manually extract the DAPI channel, which is again, which channel? The B channel, right? In a BGR image. What does that mean? My third dimension, again, if you are new to Python, I just want to make sure you understand this. If you look here, my image is an array of size 1104 by 1376 by three. And it's an array of unsigned integer eight, which means my values go from zero to 255. And this is Y dimension like height, and this is the X dimension width, and this three stands for B, G, and R. Again, when you double click and open it, when you look at the third channel, you can see the pixel values right there, okay? Uh, each pixel right here, and this is, uh, these are all the values of B. Now, if I go to index one, these are all G values, or the amount of green. And if I go index two, these are all red values. Okay, this is how you slice and look at your data. Okay, okay. so I think now we are all on the same page that we understand that, okay, we have an array with three channels. First one is B. So how do we uh, extract the first one? It's basically my blue channel, or the array called blue channel is my input image, right? My input image array, which is this array with all the values from uh, you know your height and the width dimension for all the values, extract only the zeroth channel. Again, zeroth channel is our blue. So when I run this line, you should see another image or another array called blue channel because that's what we are calling it. And it has uh, a size of 1104 by 1376. It doesn't have red, green, and blue, obviously, because we are only getting the blue image. And blue image is nothing but what is it? Every image is a grayscale image with intensity information, uh, in a, if you think of uh, images as RGB or BGR. So now let's go ahead and look at this image by using plt.imshow. And if you go ahead and look at this image, here you go. So this is a an easy way of uh, 
visualizing only your blue channels okay this is not really segmentation you can think of it as it but uh, this is uh, i should say the very basic of uh, segmentation now if you kind of squint your eyes you can see these regions right around here so this is not true segmentation i'm not just getting the nuclei i'm getting some areas surrounding the nuclei also as part of this image so let's do an actual thresholding how do you uh, do the thresholding first of all let's look at the histogram of this again we have 1104 by 1376 and three channels now uh, or in this case only one channel right only blue image so let's look at the histogram for every pixel i'm just want to plot a histogram so the way you do that is plt dot histogram and blue channel is two dimensional channel right it has 1104 by 1376 yeah now i want to collapse all of that into one array because for us we just want to look at pixel values and the way you do that is dot flat okay when you do dot flat that kind of collapses everything into so uh, again don't want to dwell too much on this but let's just say uh, all pixels equal to my blue channel dot flat when i do that your all pixels is uh just a a flat a flat iter one okay it's just a uh, flattened uh array of these blue channels okay so uh, apparently i cannot open that so that uh, did not work out well but uh, anyway so this is what flattening actually is doing and when we plot it we want 100 bins and uh let's go from 0 to 255 first okay and go ahead and plot it and again, our plots are showing up here. But for you, the plots may be showing down here. I chose to display it up here. If you want to find out how to do it, go ahead and Google search it. Okay, I seem to have a lot of dark pixels and uh, I don't know what's happening up here. So let's go ahead and kind of zoom into this region. So for that, let's plot zero to 120 or so. It gives us a slightly better image. So it looks like, okay, so I have a whole bunch of dark pixels down here, maybe below 40. And above 40, I have some bright pixels. So let's set a threshold of 40. Remember, again, we are going back to this example here. I'm trying to find this line. And that threshold, I'm defining it as 40. So let's now go back here and define our background as my blue channel. What is my blue channel? My blue channel is this 2D image. My blue channel is this 2D image. Okay, where every pixel, if it's less than or equal to a value of 40, I wanna sort that as background. If it's greater than 40, I wanna sort them as nuclei. So this is, I'm literally manually thresholding it. Okay, by using NumPy arrays. Again, each of this image is nothing but a NumPy array. Yeah, a two dimensional or three dimensional with pixel values. So I'm saying that if that value is less than or equal to 40, dump it, all those pixels into something called background above 40 uh, nuclei. Again, this will be a binary. So the, the end result would be a Boolean result, which is one or zero, true or false. Yeah, that's what binary means. So let's go ahead and run these two. Okay, run these lines and look at the output. Okay, there you go. And now if you look up here, my nuclei and my background, the, the shape should be the same, but the type of the values are Boolean. You can see that true. Let's open nuclei. Okay, let's make it big because you can see apparently on the top left hand corner, there is a nuclei and this is the shape of that nucleus. And all truths represent a pixel that belongs to nucleus. All false represents a pixel that's background. So if I keep sliding, we should find another nuclei uh, uh, to the right-hand side somewhere. And then if I go down, there is another large nuclei or a bunch of nuclei down here. Okay, so in, uh, let's actually go back to our image and have a look at this. And uh, uh, we are probably looking at one of these nuclei when we were looking at those numbers. But anyway, so this is, this is how uh, you can manually separate them into nuclei and background. Now, if you go ahead and show the nuclei, okay? Again, I'm using plt.imshow and cmap equals to gray. If you don't put that, then your image will have some colors to it and you misinterpret that as something else if you don't know any better. But here is the image. So here is the blue channel image that we extracted. And here is the thresholded image. 
you see by thresholding this to pixel value above 40 it's removing this halo or these uh, cytoplasm representation you know uh, uh, contribution as part of our image i think there is cytoplasm but anyway that representation is taken away and we are only looking at nuclei so i hope yeah uh, this this makes sense so all of that we manipulated numpy arrays to do that okay we physically looked at histogram and we kind of uh, uh, manipulated using numpy array so when you do this stuff this is by using numpy array now let's look at how you can easily do this as part of opencv there is uh, a method called threshold so just apply cv2 dot threshold and Apply it on what? Apply it on blue channel, okay? Since we already separated the blue channel, apply it on the blue channel to a value of 40. I'm doing exactly the same I just showed you up here, but in a proper way using OpenCV's threshold uh, method here, okay? So apply this threshold on all the on the array called blue channel and apply a threshold of uh, value 40 and anything above that convert all the values to 255 and this value this is nothing but okay once you threshold it what value do you want to assign to that threshold it should be two, uh, in this example 255 and we are applying a cv2 dot threshold binary we'll see other variations of this threshold later on but for now uh, hopefully this line makes sense so let's go ahead and apply this line okay run this line and if you look up here by the way when you run this line it outputs two values that's why i have two values here okay one i called it ret1 this is the actual value of the threshold okay this should be 40 no surprise there and this threshold one is an array that has the uh, uh, pixel values, you know, after the threshold. So if you look up here, RET1 is 40. This is where we want a threshold. And this threshold one, you see how it assigned all values 255. And previously we had true, 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 and now 255. So this is exactly what I mean when I say, uh, uh, you know, extracting these two. Now let's go ahead and look at this image. Because this is a two dimensional array, we can just uh, look at it using imshow. Let's look at it and in the plots. So here it is. So this is the output we got. This is the image that's threshold one. And the other one here is the image that we got by manually doing this thresholding of background and nuclear. There should be absolutely no difference. See when I switch between these two, in fact, let's go to this image, you see, just to prove that it's switching. And when you look at this image and this image, absolutely identical. Okay, so that's why no point in doing playing with NumPy arrays unless you want to. You can approach this way. Now, what if you don't know where what the optimal place is for this threshold? For example, when you have this histogram, we said that, okay, 40 is good, but what if it is not 40, but what if it is 60? What is this optimal value? For that, we can actually follow uh, an automated or automatic way of doing it using Otsu. I'm pretty sure if you especially used, for example, uh, you know, Zen uh, thresholding or image J, you will see these, uh, uh, you know, Otsu right there. Otsu is almost the de facto uh, auto thresholding method. Okay, so let's go ahead and use Otsu to threshold this. Now, how do you use uh, Otsu again? Remember cv2.threshold, same library, cv2.threshold, which means we'll get two things out. One is the threshold value. The second one is all the pixels uh, after thresholding, okay? So that's the two. Now, except in this case, the threshold value is, we are not telling what the threshold value is. The system will automatically find what the threshold value is, okay? So let's expand the right-hand side a bit so you can see this thing in its entirety. So. Again, we are applying this on our array called blue channel. And here we are going all the way from zero to 255, okay? Uh, all, in, this basically is my way of saying include all these uh, uh, pixels and, uh, or sorry, this is assigning, I always make this mistake. Uh, this is assigning values of zero and 255 uh, to the thresholded image. And then we are also doing threshold binary, but to that add on threshold otsu. 
Again, if you think this is confusing, go ahead and copy this line. It works, but as you use it more and more, you'll uh, start to get, uh, appreciate this, okay? So we are still doing binary thresholding, but instead of providing a value for threshold, we are actually provide, saying that, okay, use also thresholding. So let's run this line and look at the variable explorer. Go ahead and run the line. And now you should see RET2, which is the new threshold value. And it's Otsu is suggesting a value of 50. And here is the output, okay? They both should be very similar. I see some difference, right? I mean, with a threshold of 40, we see values of 255, 255, and 255 here. With a threshold of 50, we see 255, 255, and zero, which tells me that pixel must have uh, a value between 40 to 50, okay? So the images should be slightly different. So let's go back to our plot. And uh, this is what we had before. And let's go ahead, and I'm not sure why I'm not plotting this, but let's uh, go ahead, copy this line, paste it here and have a quick look at threshold two image, which is the one we just uh, created using Otsu. Okay, so this is the new image. This is the old image with a threshold of 40. Keep an eye on this little dot right there. It's gone when we come here, okay? And also look at the region between these two nuclei. It's decreasing because it has pixel values between 40 and 50. Okay, so that's uh, uh, an automated way of doing binary thresholding. Now, we can end there, but uh, let me show you something a bit more fun. First of all, let's go ahead and import NumPy because I'm going to use something uh, as part of NumPy because I'm going to uh, use my uh, np.array. You see this ret2, which is nothing but our value of uh, 50. Okay, I'm gonna supply that to digitize the image. Now, for a binary threshold, in this case, what we are trying to do is separate this into background and nuclei. But what if you want to do multi-thresholding, background, nuclei, and something else? I'm going to cover that in the next tutorial because this is already longer than 20 minutes. I don't want to take too much of your time, so let's save that for next tutorial. But I want to show you the function I'm going to use uh, uh, to do that, uh, well, to actually digitize these images. When I say digitize, all it's doing is, is assigning for each of these individual segments, it assigns a value of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So in a way, digitize is uh, uh, segmenting your image. Uh, so digitize what? Digitize your blue channel image using what bins? Using a threshold value, in this example, threshold value of 50. Now you can have multi-threshold values here. That's That would come in the next tutorial. That's why I'm supplying this as a list, and that's why I'm converting, or a NumPy array, that's why I'm com converting this into NumPy array. Hopefully things make more sense in the next tutorial if this is confusing. Okay, let's do these two and have a quick look at our digitized image. So if I go to the plots, this is my digitized image. And this is, was my thresholded image. This is my digitized image. And if you look at the variable explorer, regions one is the digitized image. Again, in this case, my values are one or zero, okay? And if I have multiple segments, again, multi thresholds, then it would be zero, one, two, if I have three of them. Four of them, zero, one, two, three. I hope you got the point. So in this case, it's only two. So the background has value of zero and the nuclei has a value of one. Okay, so this sets the stage for our next tutorial, which is uh, how to do multi-thresholding. This is only single thresholding right now, which gives us two values, binary values, right? So I want multi-thresholding. So let's actually uh, wait for the next tutorial and please subscribe to this channel so you get automatically notified when we get new videos uploaded. So thank you very much for your attention.